Hi and welcome to this nesting and fabrication tutorial video series. In this video we're going to talk about component sources. A dialog that allows you to set up all the components that will be used by all your nest studies. So much like the process material library, the component sources dialog can be accessed via the fabrication tab and selecting the first icon component sources. This particular dialog is split into three views. A list view down the left hand side shows you all the components within the particular project. The window in the top right hand corner, which shows your nest properties for the selected component and a preview at the bottom right hand corner. So as you can see from the list, we can see all of the components that have been created within the design workspace. If I scroll down slightly, you can see that some of these components are all but grayed out. That's because we chose to ignore them in our nest preparation dialog, which we discussed in a previous video. Because we ignored those in nest preparation, we don't have the options available to us in component sources. There's a couple of things I can change about this view. First of which is I can control which columns are visible. So if I'm not really interested in the material, I can go ahead and unselect that. If I'm not interested in the area, I can unselect that and so on. If for whatever reason I want to reset my view, I can hit reset at the bottom of this dialog. The next thing I'd like to point out is we're currently looking at this in the tree view, meaning we can see our component structure. If you'd simply like to see a list of all the components we'll be passing to a nest study, go ahead and select this icon at the top left hand corner, which will change you into the list view. The list view shows you the quantities and the components that we pass to the nests, but you lose the component structure. The next thing I'd like to talk about is nest properties. So as we select each individual component, we have a series of nest properties available to us that we can control on a component by component basis. So we can override the quantity and we have some options regarding orientation as well as rotation controls. So much like materials, I can decide whether I want to allow a 90 degree rotation, 180 and 270. And I can also control my deviation from these presets, as well as being able to customize the increment. Unlike materials, these settings are just for this one component, rather than modifying the global material settings. The only new parameter here is orientation. And to describe orientation, I'm going to use this view down here at the bottom right hand corner. So by default, you'll be presented with the isometric view. If you use these arrows, you can change the view from front a right view, a top view, and if you go all the way to the end, you're presented with the nested shape. And as you can see, this is a representation of the shape that we pass to the nest algorithm. The orientation in which this is displayed represents a zero degree orientation. So my 90, 180, and 270 are all measured from this particular orientation in an anti-clockwise direction. Now let's say I wanted to measure 90, 180, 270, but from a modified angle. This is where the orientation comes in. So if I enter an orientation of 45 degrees, I'm effectively now saying that this is my zero and I'm going to measure 90, 180 and 270 from this 45 degrees. So my allowable orientations would be 45, 135, 225 and so on. So my orientation parameter effectively allows me to set a new zero in which the rotational increments are measured from. This parameter is really useful if you're trying to match up grain direction, for example. So being able to control these individual nest parameters on a component by component basis is really useful. But we also have the ability to bring in external components that we wish to nest alongside the open component. To do that, we can go ahead and hit this plus, choose a single or multiple new sources in which we want to add to the document. In this case, I'm gonna add a couple of audio cases. Now that I've added those external components, you can see that the overall list of components has grown significantly, allowing me to modify the nest properties again on a component by component basis. Once I'm happy that I've aggregated all my components together, and I'm happy with all of my nest properties, I can go ahead and press OK. A couple of things you'll notice. Firstly, nothing changes with my design. I'm still only presented with my original design. 
That's because component sources is setting up the components in which I want to nest together. The next step is actually to go ahead and create a nest study. Thanks for taking the time to watch this nesting and fabrication tutorial video on component sources. Please make sure you check out the other videos in this series.